all treadmills need to be calibrated every once in a while. There are two steps to calibration. The first step is to measure your belt length. It's fairly simple. Sometimes manufacturers specify it, but it's always better to measure it yourself. Just place three markers on the belt, like in the image, one, two, and three, approximately equidistant, but not necessarily. Measure distance between one and two, two and three, and three and one. Total them up, and you've got your belt length. The next step is to measure rotations and for that you need a marker on the belt in this case i've got a logo so i'm going to use the logo measure 20 rotations of the speed you want to test 20 or 40 or 100 measure the time involved with those rotations do a bit of math using the belt length and you've got your, your actual belt speed compare that to what your setting is on the treadmill and you've got a good calibration. This app provides an alternative. It's not the gold standard because the gold standard is doing it manually but it comes pretty close. When the app starts for the first time this is what you will see. Starting from the top, lead in seconds. This defines how long the preview is going to be. Use it to finalize the device position, aiming to have the belt marker pass through the center of the preview display. There are four arrows around the display that should help. Next is treadmill speed. Notice that it's using the imperial system, miles per hour. The belt length, two buttons below, is also defined in inches. Now my treadmill uses the metric system, so this is as good a time as any to introduce settings. Touch the gear icon. Starting from the top, let me uncheck Imperial system. Next is flip video. This is dependent on your device. You may need to check this, you may not. We will explore it shortly. Auto save results. This instructs the app to automatically save results following a successful run. The remaining settings are either self-explanatory or best not fiddle with at this time. So let's return to the main screen. So getting back to speed, notice that this it's switched to kilometers per hour, the metric system. Now setting the speed serves two purposes. First, when auto-saving, this number which you enter is attached as a label to the result, allowing you in future to establish trends of the speed. Is the treadmill gradually slowing down or gradually speeding or whatever? The second purpose is it makes processing considerably quicker without compromising accuracy. In my situation, I want to test 10.5 kilometers per hour. There. Next, number of samples. Leave this at the default, 10. Later, if you want greater accuracy at the expense of time, you may increase it. Finally, enter the belt length that you had calculated earlier. It's also switched to the metric system. My belt length is 268, so let me quickly change that. Done. Okay, now when running the app for the first time, you need to grant it permissions. First, to be able to write to the SD card. Next, to allow to record video. And lastly, to allow to record audio. Finally, again, only the first time, getting back to flip video, you will be cautioned that some devices may need the video to be flipped. I know my device needs it, so there. We're now good to go. Press start.
your treadmill should be running by now and get ready to position your device so this is a pretty good position for a hands-off reading it's really close to the treadmill about six inches away the, and the marker is passing right in front of it in the preview you should be able to see the marker passing through the center of the video screen this is an actual run you press start the preview starts you position the device so that the marker is passing from the center using the arrows the recording starts Recording will, depending on the number of samples, will run for about 15 seconds to 30 seconds. At the end of that, recording stops and processing starts. While processing, as it encounters samples, it's going to beep. And at the end of the processing, it's all happening fairly fast, you get a result. So after the video is taken, the app processes the video and returns a result. As shown on the screen here, it's, it's returned 9.26 kilometers per hour. Because I've turned on autosave, this result has been saved in the app's database. And we can go in there to look at the samples that made up this result. So let's click on the binoculars and you get to see the samples. If autosave had not been turned on, you would get the option to save these samples and apply a label to them when saving. You also get to see all the results. And if you click on any of the row, you get options to deal with that result. Let's click on the second row, which is 11 kilometers per hour and 11.17, determined to be 11.17 kph. And you get to see a bunch of options for that row and associated with that row. Support. I do provide support. You can expect a response within 24 hours. And that's mainly because we could well reside in different time zones. Use the question mark icon to get in touch via email. Notice that the email is pre-populated with information. There's your, there are your settings and there are two attached files. These are app-created files. One of the most recent MP4 recorded and the other is the processing log. These will greatly help understand and ultimately resolve the issue you're facing. You can add information at the top of the email that describes your problem. That's it. All the best.